What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Thursday evening. It is March 17th, 2022, about 7.30 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.6 earthquake into the region of, uh, looks like just around the Costa Rica area. A whole bunch of earthquake activity happening. We're going to start off uh, right off the bat here with uh, Yellowstone National Park. I want to bring this up here so you guys can see on the view here real quick. There we go. We're getting kicked back up here with a pretty strong earthquake swarm once again around the area of Lake Yellowstone. Uh, seeing quite a bit of movement. These earthquakes that you see over here on the Maple Creek area, these three pointers are from Idaho. Uh, but we're also looking at some earthquakes swarming over here around the northwest corner of the park. Let's go ahead and look at a little bit closer detail. Looks like the area of the epicenter of all these quakes here appear to be around the borehole area just around the northern part of yellowstone lake you can see all that movement kicking up there within the last few hours and also uh overnight as well in, into the morning but really ramping up here about oh about five hours or so ago earlier this afternoon my time and uh things just really kicking up here there's a good handful of quakes here more Definitely more fingers and toes than I have to count on this uh, earthquake map. There's probably a good 50 or 60 earthquakes, if not more, uh, on that map. Uh, looking at this other view here, you can see some of the stronger ones showing up here on the distant stations away from the borehole station. These are some of the uh, stronger ones. Uh, and that only shows about maybe five or six, but there is a bunch of microquakes in there. And they're showing up pretty significantly on the borehole over here on the upper falls this one shows a little bit more of the seismic activity because uh, it's a little bit closer but uh, we kind of decipher uh, the epicenter area with all these other little spikes right that kind of almost on top of the um, seismograph station itself that's where all this activity is kicking up so uh, definitely ramping up pretty significantly usgs the latest map here uh, we'll go down to the all magnitudes i don't know if they've got to this or not uh Let's see here. What do we got? Zooming in. We got three earthquakes listed on the map here. Uh, UTC time was at 317, 21, 26. So 21, 26. Looks like that's going to be at least one of those two pointers there. Um, 21, 26. And then 21, 22, 21, 16. So yeah there's they have at least three i'm really surprised they did anything here uh, as far as listing the earthquakes here on the map but there are two two pointers and some smaller ones they did list this 0.5 at 2122 uh, 0.5 at 2122 could be uh, uh any one of these maybe this one right here but as you can see uh there's definitely a bunch so i'm guessing these are all under 1.0 uh, magnitude but there's a bunch and uh, earlier today as well kicking up pretty good nice and uh, a nice little swarm kicking up here nothing major going on here at Yellowstone but a swarm uh, definitely kicking up here a little bit uh, in that area of Lake Yellowstone major would be uh, well looking at a bunch of threes and fours that, that would be considered a major earthquake swarm uh, if that were to happen and it's been a while since we've had that type of activity uh, these swarms of twos and ones come and go uh, but it seems like they've been coming lately more than going but uh, we'll see if this lasts this back out of the state of Wyoming, and here are these double threes that kicked up that we that I showed you there on the Yellowstone map. It's going to be these two threes back to back here in this Maple Creek area. Bam, bam. Those were showing up there uh, from these earthquakes here in Idaho, outside of Stanley, Stanley, Idaho, at 10 kilometers for a pair of 3.1s, pretty much back to back to each other within about a minute. These uh, the pair of earthquakes struck. Since then, we haven't seen any further activity, at least listed here on this map. Uh, looking at the west coast here, you can see, uh, well, looks a little active here tonight. Spread out all over the state. Uh, Northern California, not so much. A little activity up here into the Oregon region outside of Lakeview. It's a lot of mountains up here. Uh, 6.2 kilometers for a 1.5 and a 1.7. They're a little bit more shallower. Uh, so some inland earthquake activity there into parts of uh, parts of Oregon. A little earthquake activity around the Lake Almanor area south of Chester. 
with a 1.4 at 10 kilometers. Most of the activity continuing around the Cobb Mountain region with the hydrothermal operations going on down there with those induced earthquakes from the uh, operations themselves. Uh, Vallejo, outside of Vallejo, in between this fault system, the Rogers Creek Fault and the Hayward Fault Zone, getting a little activity out here in the bay. A 1.2 at 10 kilometers, pretty deep there. Also a little quarry blast going on out here. Uh, 1.4 showing up on the seismograph. Some activity outside of Pacifica, a couple small ones. That was from earlier this morning. No subsequent earthquake activity since then. Uh, low activity throughout the central part of California, up and down the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone, the creeping section, and the Ridgecrest area, all shown some low, a low activity today as well. Uh, let's see what we got here off the coast. Uh, looks like south of Long Beach at 2.1 near San Pedro, California, 6.5 kilometers, and some earthquake activity in the Pacific out here, 2.8. Uh, well off the uh, Santa Barbara Island area. Looks like 8.8 uh, .8 kilometers for that earthquake. So overall, low heightened movement out here along the west coast, throughout the Nevada area as well. Seeing a line of movement stretching down from uh, northwest of Tonopah. This area right here, of course, has seen the, the swarm kick up. Right, You guys remember the swarm that kind of stretches across here towards the uh, Candelaria Hills uh, from that six-pointer that struck a couple years ago out here. Now, now that swarm has basically died off completely. We haven't seen any... Uh, aftershock sequences there in quite a while uh, but we are seeing a line of movement up here north of that area uh, with a couple ones kicking off there well north of Tonopah uh, looks like the swarming activity around Las Vegas has died down we were watching some movement out here around the Alamo Nevada area over the last 30 days seeing a, a pretty good handful of earthquakes out here southwest of the region about uh, 11 earthquakes in this area and also there's that uh, swarming northwest of Las Vegas around this fault system, around the Rock Valley area, Rock Valley Fault Zone. Uh, 133 earthquakes within this region of Nevada. That's a pretty good uptick there over the past month. Uh, today though, things a lot different story. Just quieting down for sure out there. Uh, New Mexico had this earthquake late last night. This 3.8 came in after the update. Uh, around Clayton, New Mexico at five kilometers below the surface for that earthquake, Oklahoma, uh, New Madrid zone. A little activity around the Great Smoky Mountains. Nothing spectacular. Looks like a 2.5 was the latest quake uh, around the uh, Knoxville area. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Mount St. Helens not showing any seismic activity, at least here on this map. Let's go ahead and check out the latest trimmer. That is not the latest trimmer. That's from last night. And here is tonight's release today's. Got 80 epicenters of tremor uh, just outside of Seattle around the Strait of Juan de Fuca up here. Uh, basically, yeah, nothing else is going on in Northern Cal or Oregon area. All confined up here to Washington today with 80, uh, 80 epicenters of tremor. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the volcanic seismicity map here at Mount St. Helens because I've been watching this pretty closely and there's been a, a lot of activity not showing up here on the map. Uh, as far as it going out to the public. So I've been looking at these. Uh, oh, not found now? Come on now. See what's going on. Go back to the uh, previous day. That's kind of odd. Look at that. We're missing data. Hold on a second here. 317. I wonder if they're... What do we got here? 317.00. But we're, we're stretching into UTC time of... Uh, what is UTC time right now? We're at 318 uh 0240 i believe right yeah so we're missing a whole bunch of data here from the seismograph stations there at uh, mount st helens looks like it kicked off sometime uh last night around this time and we haven't seen any uh any activity come back but you notice the activity kicked up before it went offline there's a couple well-defined spikes there at Mount St. Helens before the uh, data itself went offline. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, maybe I see there's nothing from today. The image not found, which I find pretty strange. Uh, we'll see if the, any of these other, see this station here is the one I, I've been picking up all the data from. Let's see if this one's working. Uh, it's a three component, looks like as well. Rembrandt Mount St. Helens is the name. Oh, look at that. What is going on here, guys? Do, do, do. 
Image not found either from that seismograph station. That is really odd. So now we got to go back out a ways and see if uh, any of these distant ones are working. If not, I find this highly ooh, I find this highly suspicious. What's going on with the lack of data here, folks? This one went offline too about the same time. That one also shown some earthquake activity. But remember, this station here is just to the southwest of the crater at the summit area of Mount St. Helens. And there's some earthquake activity there as well. That's kind of odd, folks, let me tell you. Very odd. Let me try um, Let me try this one here. They can't take all of these offline, can they? Maybe they can. They'll just pull the, switch, pull the plug. Turn the switch. Uh, okay, this one's, show, this one's online here. So this one is the correct time, 0318. Let's go back to the previous day and see what we got. Now this is a ways away from the crater area though, but if the seismic activity is uh, high enough, it'll definitely pick it up as well. And uh, wow, look at this, I wonder what that is. That's a little odd reading, not for sure if it's some type of adjustment or what. But, uh, and then there's these smaller spikes here I know that's a localized earthquake. That showed up on the other one. And then uh, a couple other localized ones here as well. So I'm not for sure what this signature is. It looks like some type of instrument adjustment. But uh, not 100% certain on that. Uh, but I do find it very odd that they've uh, taken out, taken off a couple of those, uh, those data stations there. Especially after we were seeing Mount St. Helens swarm up a little bit, uh, very odd. So I'll keep I'll keep checking back on that. Uh, Lucian Trench low activity here on the all magnitudes map. Nothing spectacular. Uh, earthquake aftershock sequences continue from the 7.3 off the coast of Fukushima, Japan, into the Japan Trent, uh, Japan Trench today. A couple fours kicking up there uh, from that 7.3 that struck. Also down here. Uh, further south into Japan, just off the coast of Taiwan as well. A couple fives kicking off here over the last 24 hours. Actually, that was some uh, earlier activity this afternoon. So no further movement within that region since then. Tonga area, 5.1 struck this morning. And, uh, but well, since then, we haven't really seen anything else kick up here. Been relatively quiet on this part of the Pacific Plate. Java Trench showing uh, 4.6. This one a little bit newer. Uh, at 20 point, uh, 2053 hours, uh, 4.6 at 136 kilometers for that earthquake. Uh, one earthquake uh, from earlier this morning as well, 5.3. It's all old. A bunch of old earthquake activity here in this region. So waiting on some further movement. Look at this train of activity. You guys see that on the map? From about uh, Idaho where they've seen those three pointers down through New Mexico and then a line of movement across the board. You know what that kind of outlines right there? kind of outlines the North American Craton area, kind of sits up here in this region. This could be what we're seeing, a line of activity. And sometimes we get these earthquakes up here around Ohio as well. Uh, and that would b just further verify the movement of the, uh, the North American Craton right around it there. It's a relatively, uh, let's type that in here real quick. Show you guys, let's see if I got that. I do have it up here, here we go. North American Craton. We covered that uh, quite a while back. Here's the outline of it. Kind of looks like it, right? You can follow that trail of activity. It does extend down here into part portions of Texas, but it does uh, come up here also right around the New Madrid zone in that area. So it kind of verifies a little bit of that uh, of that activity right up against there. Uh, continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past 600 million years. So while this is stable, everything else around it kind of moves and forms mountain ranges and whatnot, uh, Great Smoky Mountains and other areas, uh, Wichita Mountain areas and whatnot. I'm not gonna go into all of this, but uh, does kind of does kind of verify the, uh, the activity right around there. And a lot of times we see act the activity down here in the uh, Pecos, Texas region, but a lot of that is uh, um, de definitely uh, the gas and oil uh, wells that uh, are creating those quakes out there. All right, uh, moving on here, Hawaii, what do we got here? A little bit of movement, southeast region. Some earthquake activity uh, up here around the Kilauea volcano. Well, actually to the east, 2.0. And some movement on the uh, southeast flank 
Mona Loa up here getting in on some activity. It looks like some shallow quakes here in the upper two range and a 1.9. Uh, most of this movement is from this morning with no subsequent activity there, but uh, eh, kind of kicking up a little bit around that uh, volcano. What else we got? South America pretty quiet. Uh, Atlantic Ocean seeing a little activity throughout the region. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico Trench, excuse me. Not a whole lot going on there, folks. So, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, ch -ch 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 checked out the trimmer. We checked out Yellowstone. That's kind of a big deal tonight. Let's check out the Earthquakes Canada map and see what's going on up here in the north part. And uh, a little bit of activity, it looks like, here. Uh, lighten, lighten up the map. Uh, up around Alaska and also just offshore. One earthquake over here in the Ont Ontario area with a 2.2. Uh, and uh, other than that, not a whole lot over the last day. Just some scattered activity throughout the uh, western portion here off, coast, off the coast. And that one little earthquake here. Uh, this one, what do we got here? Come on, hand. There we go. Yeah, at least the hand looks normal today, right? Remember last week? It's kind of looking weird, like the, the hand of doom, so to speak. But it uh, looks back to normal, I think. All right, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Solar weather. Let's recap that real quick. I don't believe we got anything major going on there, but we will uh, verify that. Things look pretty calm in the flare department. Uh, not a whole lot of sunspot activity going on. Uh, if it is, it is dying off and uh, decaying and, and getting quite boring, actually. Three-day geomagnetic forecast calls for green conditions. Uh, not a whole lot of potential for storming. KP index sitting really low at about 1. All right, folks, have a good evening. Um, also, just a heads up, we are uh, looking at severe weather potential here Monday and Tuesday out in Texas and uh, parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. I will be out there uh, for the for that event Monday and Tuesday. We'll see what happens after those days. See what kind of uh, setups we have, but we're looking at a pretty severe risk of of, of weather uh, and potential strong tornadoes as well come Monday and Tuesday into portions of Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. So I will be out there streaming live here on the YouTube channel. So make sure you get, uh, make sure if, if you love storms like I do, which I do, uh, not only love uh, geology and earthquake events and everything space and earth related, uh, I, I'm, I'm a storm chaser. That's what I do. I'm a storm chasing since I've had my license since I was 16. So that's, that's what I do. Aside from earthquake activity and geology studies, uh, storms, lightning, tornadoes, that's what I love. So I will be live streaming. Uh, and we'll be all right up into the big storms, no doubt. Just got to uh, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get notified when we do go live come Monday. I'll be out there with Missy Mimi's. It's going to be her first time going out there. She's pretty excited. So we're going to show her some, uh, I'm going to show her some big storms out there. And uh, we'll, of course, we'll remain safe, but we will also be sharing our views with the viewers out here on YouTube. So we'd like to always share uh, a lot of stuff that we do here uh, on the channel with, with all of our viewers. So make sure you make sure you tune in. Monday and Tuesday, we'll be back uh, out uh, back east, Southern Plains area, parts of the south, doing some, uh, some pretty cool storm chasing, folks. So, all right, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Have a good night, everyone. Peace out.